So let's continue the painting. I'm now going to add color with this brush. This is a Da Vinci Finest Red Sable brush. Extremely expensive, I think. I thought, I think it cost, when I bought it, it costed, is that, <laughs> costed? That is not English. I think it was uh, close to 50 euros. So I've added water to it and I'm just wanting to show you how it works for painting with a large brush. Now I have to admit to you, although I can see that this is a great quality brush that has everything to do with the amount of water that it can take and um, also the amount of paint it can take and the way it it works the paint. Um, I do prefer a slightly smaller brush, but I know there are many painters who really love the bigger brushes, so that's why I'm using this one right now. I bought this one many years ago uh, because I read in an article that uh, if you have a brush like this, you only need this brush and you can do anything with it. And um, unfortunately, um, it didn't work for me. Not at all. So, But let's try again. Here is the paint. We were working with Windsor Red, I believe. Yes. So picking up Windsor Red. Let's see what that does. I'm just putting it in everywhere and letting it flow. Some pigments have, a, have an easier flow than others. You will find that out for yourself. There are pigments that when you put them on a wet surface, they they start moving around by themselves, but there are also pigments who don't do that as much. And then you have to help the pigment, so to speak, to get moving. Here, over here, this is not what I intended, but that is the downside of this larger brush for me, a smaller brush makes it easier to be precise. But maybe it works just great for you. There are so many great watercolor artists who are using only one brush, a big one, a relatively big one. So. Picking up some extra. I had to run to the kitchen. You have no smell, but I do. <laughs> I was cooking and, uh, well, I was just in time. When I am, when I am coloring or painting, I lose track of time. I can do this for hours and hours. Look, this is something I don't like. This brush is getting this shape. So, there are quite a lot of reasons why I don't use this brush so often. Picking up extra, extra paint. This is nice, happy accident. You see that? That darker spot? Lovely.
Now I have more brushes, for example this one, this is a filament brush, that means that the hairs are synthetic, fake. These brushes are a lot less expensive, I'm picking up water now, and these filament uh, hairs have less, uh, are not able to to take as much water as the um, natural hairs. But other than that, I have had pretty nice results with filament brushes. I use them uh, most often. The water brushes all also are uh, made of uh, synthetic hairs. Now when later in this project the details come are needed to, are so my English is a mess to this morning. <laughs> Maybe I will be having a migraine. That could well be. You know, then sometimes I just mess up my speech, my speaking and then a day later it turns out there was a migraine. Well, I hope not, but you never know. Picking up a little more water for the leaves here. So, and now picking up Windsor Red. And you can use any red you want. But I try to come as close to the real leaves as possible. Now if I want to make a perfect match then I will have to blend different paints. But this is not a precise botanical painting. This is loose watercolor fun. So this slightly light, uh, smaller brush than the previous one allows me to be much more detailed. I really, really like that. Picking up extra. Today is uh, the shortest day of the year, December 21st. It is the birthday of my uh, eldest niece, the one that loves painting. Oh, that little leaf did not get any water from me, so I need to add that. And she turned 15 years old. She has this great talent for watercolors and she never had it on her wish list. So I decided to buy her a set of watercolor paint. So I will now let this dry and then start doing the last one. There is another area that needs this color. I really really like this process. I cannot wait to continue painting. There's another one that I like using. It is this one. It looks a bit uh, smudgy and that is because it is old and stained. 
And this new, this is called a cat's tongue. So I'm going to add water to it right now. And this is a number six. And I've been using this one a lot. And then I discovered the angled brushes and started using, using them even more. But this one I love. I think I one day I want to have a bigger one. A cat's tongue gives me uh, a lot of uh, control. And, but this brush also is a uh, cheaper one. It is uh, made of filament um, hairs. So it takes less water and less paint. So you have to add water to your brush more frequently. Now, let's pick up paint. Here's the paint. And let's just have some fun. So this cat's tongue together with my um, angled brush really is my favorite and then of course the water brushes because they don't uh, need the jar of water they have carried their own water inside of the barrel That is such a great invention. I also found out lately that you can now buy some sort of watercolor primer that you can put on a canvas just paint it on a canvas let it dry and then you can work with um, watercolor on canvas now that is nice my brush is still covered with a little bit of paint but I'm also adding a little bit of extra water to it so I can work this leaf over here in this space it's not that bad if you uh, cross lines no problem at all I think this can be red as well. And I can see over here that I forgot a leaf here. I'm also having my um, my printed sheet with the design here next to me on the table so I can check if I'm not forgetting things because with these thin and light graphite pencil strokes on the on the paper they slowly 
to get covered with paint and um, I want to be sure that I uh, I know where I'm going so I have the, the, the sheet as, as a reference here on the table This is going well. Well, so. Now everything needs to dry and then uh, we can uh, go for the next uh, phase. After checking the reference print, I could see that over here I am missing a piece. And I'm going to paint that now. And I'm using another um, brush. And this is a very special one, the Winsor & Newton Series 7. And it is said to be the best brush in the world. I have a size 2 over here, so pretty small. And I have been using it for a while. It is finest sable, so... Um, I've been using it for a while and I have to say I absolutely love this brush. So now I'm adding clean water. And then I will pick up here the Windsor Red. Here we go. Oh! Oh, here's water. I thought it had already dried. Now that would be exceptionally fast. Picking up a little more water. And this tiny little brush, only size 2, can hold so much water or paint. And it is very precise. I really, really like this brush. And it is very soft. I think I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah. This. I, sh I need to constantly check. Check my reference photo. This is going to be part of the uh, of something else. A green that should be green. So I'm picking up a little more of the red. But this here, yeah, this is red. If you make a mistake and you color something, you paint something that should have completely different color, do not despair. It is... Um, if you look closely to paintings, watercolor paintings of the great artists, you will see that they they are doing a lot of troubleshooting along the way and that is a, a very big part of um, the process of painting troubleshooting this green here it looks extremely strong and uh, i have I want to tone things down, but but I will leave it for now because maybe when we continue building the color in this painting, this green will fit in. And the more I 
work the paper, the more higher the, the, the risk of damaging the paper. This is the Christmas decoration that I made last week. And this decoration is going to help me determine which colors to use on part of the painting. And it's all about these things, the needles. Now the question is, which color green should I make? And this is quite an bluish grayish needle. So here, here are my colors. I think forest green would do great, but it, I need a touch of white or grayish tone. My camera is having trouble uh, showing you. Well, as I'm looking at this, I think the first thing I have to do is start with an extremely light tone. I decided not to draw all the needles, so I'm going to try to draw them in with watercolor paint later on. I've no idea if that is going to work. So I'm picking up water. Oh, my brush is not clean. So I hope it is clean now. Yes, it is. I cleansed it. I'm going to use a very, very light wash. feels to me that I can still see a little red pinkish tone here, but well. So I'm going to pick the green, the forest green, but very little, only a little dot. Let's, okay, you are stable. Let's put it in. And I want this to be extremely light. Now here you can see the difference when I'm painting on, um, on dry paper. You will be much more precise on dry paper. But it will also rob you of many spontaneous happy accidents that can occur when there's water. So I'm throwing in a little bit of water here. I have to say the Series 7 Windsor & Newton brushes are absolutely amazing, I think. I love them. They are expensive, but um, this looks good. Now, what happens if I pick up a tiny dot of paint gray? Just a tiny dot. Let's see. Because there is a touch of gray in the in these leaves, these needles as we call them in the Netherlands, they are actually leaves. Here, a tiny bit more of the paint's gray. I have to be very careful because I don't want to make this 
dark I want it to stay to be very light oh, I'm cleaning my brush now and then I'm coming back to pick up excessive paint I only have a couple of minutes to go because it is uh, 4.30 p.m. The sun is setting on this uh, shortest day of the year, December 21st. The winter equinox. Equinox, you say. In English. And I can tell you, it is really dark here in the Netherlands because we have quite, quite a couple of clouds. It's a cloudy day today, grey, and then it feels like it is just not getting really, that the sun is just not rising. So I can imagine that in the northern parts of Europe and Canada, the ancient people created um, rituals to uh, to keep their spirits up until the sun would come back. Look at that. That's exactly what I was looking for. So this is a little bit of forest green and paint gray. Wonderful. I am back in the uh, Passion for Pencils headquarters. I have been doing some painting in the living room, but I'm back now. And uh, here is uh, the projects. Now, it is... Um, a day later since my previous painting and I was already thinking that because my English speaking wasn't was not so was well I, I wouldn't say I'm a fluently speaking I don't speak English that fluently, but it uh, it was more difficult than normal. And I was already thinking about a migraine approaching. <laughs> and it did. I'm blessed with a migraine today. But it is not that bad, so um, it's okay. So I'm going to continue in the painting. Now, I'm very, very very grateful for um, you all who are joining me in this process and all the people that are helping each other by writing down comments with the videos and uh, suggesting ways of uh, doing the tracing and all, all sorts of things. Now, one thing that many of you, uh, a couple of you have uh, suggested is not using a graphite pencil for the tracing, but um, a pen pastels. And I can show you a little bit. I have done a test version of this painting. And this was traced with soft pastels so it's not the pen pastels although the stuff is the same but this is a soft pastel crayon you know the little sticks and to me these lines were not fine enough I wanted thinner lines and that is why I decided to do uh, to do it again, to start over again, and then use 
a graphite pencil because I can be much more detailed with a graphite pencil. So if you choose, choose for the pastels, you might end up with thicker, thicker lines. That may not be a problem for you, but I preferred thinner lines. Now you can also see that in this version, I chose a completely different way of building color. And I decided that I wanted to make it look more loose and free. So I went for this free loose watercolor style. So I have been working on these. This is a mixture of forest green and Payne's gray. I can show you here. Forest green and Payne's gray. And then adding a lot of water and make it very, very light. I've been doing that with this one. Windsor Newton Series 7. Absolutely gorgeous brushes. But I'm now working with this one, Pentel. Fine, the fine one. The smallest brush. Let's see how that works. So I'm squeezing the brush. Oh, there is a blob of water coming out. That is not what I intended, but let's just use this here. And then I will have to clean up here. Pick up the excessive water. No. Let's go for a touch of green. Look at that. And then I'm going to add a touch of paint gray. It's next to uh, forest green in my palette. Just a touch. I have to say the light conditions here upstairs are much better. Downside, uh, downstairs in the living room, there's only one, one place that I have direct, quite direct daylight, but that window is quite small. And here I have a bigger window and this window faces west. Now normally artists would prefer windows that face north. Now this window here, it's faces uh, southwest. But because of the dark days of December, winter time, this window that faces south, south southwest, just picks up a lot more light than the small one that uh, downstairs that faces north. So, do I have more of these? Yes, I do. I'm now using the smaller print, the A4 size print, as a reference. So I keep it close to me. At first I used the larger one, but you know, that's really not necessary. Over here, there is a There is this, uh, the needles. I really have to look up what they are called. Otherwise I keep saying 
do wrong things. Now there is already a blob of green here. Let's add a little more. And a touch of the paint's grey. Now when I look at my reference uh, sheet, then I can see that there is a uh, that over here it looks it looks like this I'm trying to uh, get rid of the excessive paint gray over here so lovely just lovely now to be honest i chose the forest green here and this is a moment of learning and gaining experience because I don't think that forest green is the best color. I think there, there is a better choice, but I didn't make that and that has everything to do with a lack of experience, but I'm sure I will try to work add a different tone to this green because it's not exactly what I was looking for but again this is a project of learning and just having fun and learning in the meantime um, here I have an, another So I will now first start with the paints grey and then see what happens. Maybe I just leave it with only paints grey. Maybe that is better. Oh, that is strong. In a couple of days I will uh, perform a couple of Christmas songs in, in church. So I've been practicing this morning. 
I'm going to sing uh, songs that many people know, like uh, ones in Royal David City. Oh, <laughs> my phone is... Uh... So I'm just making this very light paints grey wash. Adding a touch of extra water. Picking up extra paint here because this is really too dark. I forgot to uh, to add water to the sur to the paper first, and then add uh, the paints gray. I think I will have to take this out, go back again, if it's not completely going the way you want to, you know, that is okay. And with uh, watercolor you can uh, You can fix a lot. Here is more. So adding water first. I really like this uh, fine Pentel brush. Picking up a tiny bit of paint grey. So I'm going to sing uh, Ones in Royal David City, Away in a Manger. A beautiful song made by Bach. O Jesu Lein Süß, O Little One Sweet. And I'm also going to sing Joy to the World. So I have been practicing. And then people start asking, do you still have to practice? Because those songs are so, you know them so well. That is exactly the reason why I have to practice them. Because they are so well known and everybody is singing them. I tend to make technical mistakes. And these songs that everybody can sing along are a little bit low for my voice. I have a very high voice and low pitch songs are much, much more difficult for me than very high songs. So I really have to practice uh, for this uh, performance.
So. Now over here, and I'm looking at my printed version with the ink lines good, well visible. Here is one. So I think I have it all now. Okay. 